not, we move on to item four. Item four is public questions uh, in relation to standing order three, three E in particular. Um, I'm going to take item four A under this, which is to receive a statement from a member of the public uh, regarding Bethania. They, they are um, uh, statements or questions, and I will allow a statement to be made by a member of the public. Clarks, can you please uh, bring in a member of the public? Right. Can you beg her Yeah, sorry, there's a lot of background noise. Yeah, sure. sorry, I'm just trying to move the other people as soon as I can. <laughs> Let me know if you're picking up anything at all, okay? There we go. Okay, thank you. Yes, I'll make myself through for now and then I'll come back in. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes, absolutely. Great. So, Nosweth Pau, um, good evening, um, councillors and clerks, and, and thank you for this opportunity. Um, just for the, the decision made at last week's council meeting to reverse the decision made um, in 2019 to close Bethania Chapel, um, I'd like to ask the council to reconsider the decision based on feedback from the community that I've collated and the lack of factual information provided to the new councillors prior to the meeting allowing them to make a truly informed decision. So further to the last meeting, um, I created an online petition. I shared that petition on my personal Facebook page um, and invited individuals to sign if they felt it to be in the best interest of the community. So I'll just read out the words in that, peti that petition just to put into context for you. So the purpose of this petition is to request Glynneath Town Council retract the decision made of, at the May meeting to reopen the community centre located at Bethania Chapel in High Street, Glynneath, despite the decision previously made to dispose of the building. We, the undersigned, whilst not against the sale or transfer of the building to a third party, with no financial burden on the Glynneath taxpayer, do not support the cost implications it has already been identified that significant structural work internally and externally is required and when operating previously was doing so at a financial loss. A feasibility study which included questionnaires to residents identified the chapel as low priority for development. The work that is potentially required on the chapel has not been accounted for in the budget, therefore other developments could be sacrificed for the chapel. And in the same meeting last week, the Council agreed the community plan for the development of the wealthy park at the top of the list. So we do not feel that the Council is representing the community it serves. So the online petition reached 308 signatures. Because of the interest in the petition, I was asked to provide a hard copy version of the form and I received a further 400 signatures. That's a total of 724 signatures. Of these signatories, there's a good representation of all age groups from all areas of the town, including local business owners. Just to put that figure into some context, um, and, and my figures might be slightly out, but I think they're there or thereabouts, 2,700 residents voted in the last election. 708 residents, or sorry, 724 residents signed the petition. So that's almost a third of the voting population or against the reopening of the community centre and the council ownership if it costs them money. The probability is there are probably a lot more that are not aware of this position because it was only available for three weeks and it was only shared via my Facebook page. I think we also need to consider the number of votes received in the last election for each of the councillors who voted for the reopening of the chapel. So again, so councillors Morgan, Gregory, Blower, Edmonds and Bullman between you, you received a total of 675 votes. That is 50 votes less than those who signed the petition and do not agree with the way you voted in the last meeting. The point again that I'm trying to make is that I don't believe that you're acting in the best interest of the community, which is the fundamental purpose of your role. To support my points, I've extracted a couple of the, the verbatim comments that have actually been made on the aligned petition, which you can see for yourselves. And I will forward, a co forward copies of the hard copy versions and the online petition, should you so wish, following this meeting that can be distributed amongst the councillors. But just to read off some of the comments, you can see how passionate the community are against this. Um, ridiculous decision and lack of any financial awareness. I don't believe this is in the interest of Denise. Many other things are needed first. 
it'll be a drain on funds in Glynneath unless the residents will end up paying more council tax is high enough already. Why reopen this if it needs work due into it? Some parts are unsafe, the kitchen needs thousands to get up to use, our children need improvements to the welfare parks. If you open this chapel, you will deprive our children places to play. Money would be better spent on the welfare park. I'm signing because it's a total waste of public money. There are far better things to do for Glynneth residents than waste money on something that's not doing anything for the village. They should not have been able to go to vote. Newly elected councillors have not been given the full facts, including costs associated to the building. Because the decision to keep the chapel is nothing but a drain on the community. Uh, another resident is, I am very disappointed that our councillors are not working together for the benefit of the residents. The chapel is clearly not viable financially and the matter was settled and should not have been brought back up to the agenda by councillors who rallied forces to get their own way. It's time to stop being bloody-minded and play in politics and respect the wishes of the constituents. The number of abstainers to this vote is also unacceptable and many councillors should now be thoroughly ashamed of themselves over this matter and appalling and productive first meeting. The finances of the community of this white elephant have been enormous enough. Sell and use the money on something that will benefit the whole community and not a few. It's part of Glynneath's culture and heritage, but I agree it would take a lot of money for its continued repair and maintenance. The money would be better allocated on other identified improvement schemes in the area. This project would be financially draining and goes against community wishes. Any available funds are better spent on already agreed projects for the benefit of all. And finally, it was already decided to sell it. I don't want any of the expense added to any costs that affect me. That's just a, a few of the comments that's been received. And I just want to finish just by saying that, you know, I am a Welsh speaker. I was brought up in Capel Annibin with Saron and Isir, where my mother was a Sunday school teacher. Deacons on both sides of my parents um, were deacons of the chapel. So I absolutely understand the sentiment some comforts may have around the chapel. However, I'm also an economics graduate. I hold a senior manager position at Tata Steel and I make commercially, commercial decisions every day. And from what I have heard and seen, um, have shown an interest in the council over the last five years, then from a personal point of view as well, I don't think that this is a, is a financially viable decision. Thank you. Uh, dear Hello, uh, Ruth, thank you for that um, presentation and uh, your points are now noted for the moment. I'm going to say Can we that... make a common question, Adele? Can anybody uh, answer, ask questions? Or is it going to be like a rabbit or a uh, Nani and Dealing, if you're all now, just to say standing order three gives members of the public the right to speak or ask questions as you have. Um, you, you will be given a reply um, following the meeting. I, I will add one thing, and in fact, I will, I will read it out, which is just to remind members and, and to inform you that what was passed in the May meeting included the following uh, phrase that the council initiates a review of how the community centre as a public asset could and should be utilised in the future, and such a review containing the options of asset transfer, that sale, and retention by the council. So just to point out that all options have been taken into account in, in proposing that motion, which was passed last month, okay? So just that, to correct you, then and correct me if I'm wrong, was it also not a statement to reopen the cafe on a, on a kind of a smaller scale? Wasn't that part of the... Yes, the, yes it was. Yeah. Yes it was. All right, yeah. so... Uh, I mean, that, that deals with, with um, the particular point about uh, the sale, but I, I, you'll have the full answer then to your points then following the meeting. Okay, Ruth? Yeah, deal with you. Uh, right. Thank you. So that's really all I've got to say and, and to conclude the item on the minutes. Item six on your agenda uh, has got a little A at the moment, which is to receive a statement from Geraint Thomas. But I understand that uh, Geraint is happy for the Friends of Athania's presentation to happen before that. So if we can organise ourselves now uh, technologically, I'm going to... to um, Send a warm welcome to Telith Evans and Brenda Harrod from the Friends of Bethania who are going to lead this presentation. And members are going to see some slides and listen to the presentation. And, and Friends of Bethania will explain 
a highlighted area that is really at the forefront of Neath at all with and the Welsh Government to get funding for regeneration. We can get that money and it's, there are lots of helpers out there in order to get it. If we have tourist attraction, if we have things going on in the village, people will come into it. They will benefit the shops. There will be more tourists, more people buying stuff. I don't want to read the, the PowerPoint. You can read it yourself. You can see all that yourself. I just want to point out that because the, um, the um, Waterfall Country project is ongoing, we can see that Glynys, if you draw, put a pin in Glynys and draw a circle all the way around, we are kind of front and centre of all these, the zip wire, the Pendere Distillery, the waterfalls, we are at the forefront of it. We are not, we are getting tourists who are coming into Pontevichan and they're not coming here. Why are they not coming here? Because there's nothing to bring them here. If there were things here to bring them here, they would spend their money in our village. They would come and they would bring their business with them. Yeah, if, you know, sorry, can I interrupt? Uh, just to check the people who are watching online, um, we are looking at the first slide beneath working together. I, I, I'm guessing by the way you're speaking that you've moved on to another slide. No, but no. I'm only seeing the, 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 the title slide. Sorry. Okay. Let me just, um, Thanks, Kenny. Yes, I can see it now. Yeah. Thank you. On a different slide to us. Yes, I'm going to start off the screen sharing the presentation back way. Really. Um, let me just. Well, I'm sorry, I'm going to do this. How's that all oh, differently now? Yeah. Revitalization of High Street on my screen. Yes, okay. Yeah, that's fine. And then, just to check, does that then turn into research and footfall? Well, I can see that that's your next slide on the left hand side, but that, the, the main screen is showing revitalization of High Street. Okay, so it's showing the screenshot. That's fine. Okay. So, as long as, would it be okay then, maybe we just pull it from here?
and the Ponte Dower Art Centre said that they hadn't found that parking had been an issue, that people were happy to walk to their, to their, their activities and things that were there. So, uh, right, okay. Um, right, they each said that the cafe was integral to a part of their venue. Many invested there saw dividends for themselves, the high street, and the local community. Uh, investment will provide better facilities, greater use of cafe, longer opening hours, more profits we got back into the cafe. Now then, the, quite a number of these venues, which I think is something that we might consider, or I beg your pardon, not we, but certainly any project, any project managers that take these on, it is pretty clear that some of them prefer to outsource their, um, their cafe facilities. In other words, a private person comes in and runs a cafe on their behalf, which means that you haven't got staffing issues with, uh, with the council employing somebody else that they actually sort of fund themselves. And then it gives them the opportunity of um, you know, opening at their own hours to uh, have speciality evenings, have events going on there, which is not necessarily um, to do with um, um, you know with the council business. That if, they, if it's their own business, then it's up to them to make a profit, and then whoever owns the building gets a gets a rental from them. Okay, so that we we thought that that was um, that, that was quite a high priority. Really, we we thought that that was a pretty good thing. Um, and of course, it takes the responsibility off of the town council, whoever owns the building. Yeah, whoever owns the building. Um, there was a possibility then of theme night, cinema suppers, or very ambitious menus. If you go to the Coliseum on the day, you can have a pre dinner, uh, a pre show, a pre theatre uh, meal there. You can do all sorts of things. It, it's not just, you know, pie in the sky. These are ideas that are already out there that other people are using. Okay. Next one. Right, so then, looking at our survey results, there are a number of option, options. Like I mentioned just now, third sector not for profit organisation. Um, in other words, a duty manager would run it and pay their own wages from the business um, generated. That's how it works in SOA. Okay, the manager there sort of gets business in, she gets things happening, and she pays her wages. So that's one system. Um, it can be transferred to a charity where it's run by a board of trustees, which is what happens in the Queen's Hall in Narbeth. It can be a community, community cooperative venture. In other words, it's a joint partnership between the owner of the building and the people who are leasing it. Um, the council retains control and continues to benefit from all facilities. So in other words, it continues to have this room, the town talk class office, the council chamber, and the community centre. Um, however, selling the building has never been ruled out as an option. That is always a possibility. The open market, however, is problematic because if you just decide to sell it on the open market, you don't know who's going to buy it. And you might end up with another Malcolm Rowe who, sorry, who, when was presented with the possibility of acquiring the building by grant funding, bulldozed it down the day before. We're talking here about the welfare hall. Yeah, the welfare hall. Like yeah. That. Yeah. The welfare hall was sold by the administrators because they went into administration. It was sold to, to a man called Malcolm Rowe, who ran it as a business for a couple of years, then decided he didn't want to run it anymore. I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that Dell and Max, Max Boyce achieved funding to acquire it. And when they went down with this news, Mr. Rowe had already bulldozed it. And Mr. Bull, Mr. Mr. Rowe turned out to have a fairly shady past. In fact, one of his business partners was put in prison for 10 years. And so I you... It is irrelevant, except that I'm, I'm saying... Yeah, I understand. It's a public forum. Yes. Yeah. 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 yes, I do understand. Yeah. So what's happened is that... What, what I'm saying is... There's anything that happens to our special buildings here, they can be not valued by somebody who buys it from the outside. That's what I, I want to say, really. Okay. Uh, yeah, next one, please. Oh, sorry, I haven't finished the bottom, actually. If you're saying... Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Sorry. Um, now, in the maintenance, um, the Heritage Lottery Fund would provide high-end renovations 
which will be guaranteed for a number of years, so self-sustainable, potentially costing the council nothing. Certainly, uh, we would anticipate that um, you know by the time we've had um, architectural funding, by, by the time we've had um, all kinds of uh, of um, you know um, grants have been applied for, that actually we could refurbish the building into whatever the community wanted it to be. Uh, these can now be and the funding based on feasibility survey results. The essential whole community support leading ultimately to the regeneration of the community. It would be better because of the way that the funding works. If you don't do um, sort of major repairs, the best thing is to do minor repairs and then go for a large grant that's going to cover everything. Okay? It'll fix the ceiling, it'll fix the uh, you know the ground, it'll it'll provide um, so, uh, ground heating, it could be anything we wanted to be. So, we're in Merthyr, they've got heat pumps into the ground, they could have state of the art. Um, so, we mentioned here that the minimum repair should be in the table, but there are grants available yes. to do those repairs yes. if only we have life for them. Yes. So, the cost. Yeah, sorry. Can you yeah. identify where those grants are? Because I'm not aware of any grants that will. Yeah, the Heritage Lottery Grant will. Where we went. Plans? Yes, we are, went. Are they, aware, sorry, are they aware of the, of the um, condition survey that was undertaken in May 2019? We uh, had. Funding for those repairs? We went when we went to see the last. Um, when we went to see them in 2019, which was um, the, the meeting, I think was the first of uh, first of October. Um, we said, right, are we able to go for any of these fundings? And they said yes, and they said. What's the roof like? And we said, well, we don't know because there's a condition survey out. You do know, though, he said, that we can give grants to stop things from deteriorating further. Okay, I'm not sure whether the ceiling is in the state. No, no, not the ceiling, but the... But the roof is out. Now yeah, that we have the yeah. essential emergency repairs to it. Um, but there are money to pay the emergency repairs. I, I'm not aware of any grant givers that would provide yes, money for yes. so many to carry out repairs in it. I might be wrong. Well, what, what wrong. we can say is what we reported back yes. from what he told us. That's, that's all I can say. Um, it's, I think it's just because it's a listed building, and I think things take time to, to process, I think they will do repairs to stop things from getting worse so that they ultimately don't have to spend so much. That's what we were told. Okay. So, um, if money is the only objection, then you know, we are kind of thinking, well, there's money out there to do all this work and so we need to start from scratch with a lot of things. Okay. Right, so the, the local development plan, I mean, this is, you know, <coughs> a little while. There might be updates from this one now. The project ticks all the boxes for all criteria for Infotolbers and most government plans. It includes social inclusion, developing tourism, uh, regeneration of the new farm, social care, alleviating loneliness, access to the arts, employment opportunities, innovation, decentralisation of facilities, a chance to be in charge of how, this is the most important, of how our town is developed, not to have decisions made on our behalf. Okay, so we, we, you can see that that is what, you know, that, that's what the aspiration is for the local authority, and I think we, we Definitely, um, sort of, we, we, we come under that umbrella. Okay. Right, we want to attract this made of funding into clinics, all benefiting from taking care of ourselves and each other, being in charge of our future, so that our young people are not leaving the town, that there's a potential here for work and business. We are, we, I know that we are sort of parking back to other places, but we can see here that Triorty in 2020 one of the best high streets of the year and attracted £604,000 invested in Triori so far just to regenerate the centre there and that's been very success, uh, successful. And the reason is strong, clear leadership working together for the greater good and obviously supportive and enthusiastic local community. And I think that's where we need to be uh, mindful that everybody needs to be on board with this. Okay, and moving on together being the thing. Now, the next, please. Right, if you have a look at the National Heritage Funding, what you can spend the money on, some of these things to engage the wider community in your heritage, they might include get, 
guide us how to talk, share any oral histories or workshops. Repairs and conservation, I've just got, we just got this two days ago off their website, so clearly it does come under what, what you just asked, um, Simon. Digital outputs, new staff posts, this could include um, current employees' role if they were dedicate, dedicating a specific amount of time to the project, paid training placements, and professional fees. Include anyone related to your project in a professional capacity from architects and heritage professionals to teaching staff. Okay. Yep. Right. Uh, now then, this next section, your heritage project could include historic, um, well, cultural traditions, historical <coughs> traditions, monuments, and historic environments from houses to fields to caves and gardens. Museums, libraries, and archives, commemorations and celebrations, telling stories and histories of people, communities, places, or events related to specific times and dates. Yeah, you may be wondering where, where all this fits in, but we have to have a place to house these activities. And although we have, do have a town hall, that is not fit for purpose for these purposes. So that's why we want to bring, you know, the people who you deserve the best. Our future generations deserve the best. So why can't we have a place where um, things happen? At the moment, we haven't got a hub in the village. Oh, why, why can't we have a hub in the village? You know, we're important, clearly it's important. Every, every other town and village, I've been spending a lot of time now in Pembroke at the moment, every small village you go through, has a beautiful hub where the people of the community meet together for a variety of activities. But why can't you need have something like that? And if it's not going to cost the people of Clinny, what's stopping us? It has been, it, it, we were, I, I was noticing that during the pandemic, for instance, and certainly afterwards when the, the one show was on talking about all these wonderful community activities that were going on and how there were they were all gathering together in certain places, and I thought, what's yeah. happening here? Yeah. What's been happening here? You know, there's been nowhere for people to come for for any sort of help and support. There's been no, you know, there's been nowhere for everybody just to get together and to do something when we could. When we could, <laughs> absolutely when we could. Yeah. But you know, they've been giving awards out to, to community workers to. To, to you know, local councils, to local, um, you know, sort of, uh, local heroes and things like that. And you think, well, what's, what's, what's in it? What are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah, what are we doing? What are we doing? Right. Okay. Yeah, it's not the end of that. Why don't we go on to the other one? We have got as well new partners. We have got an interest from the Arts Academy, who currently run their classes from Glynneath Town Hall. They are a Glynneath-based school offering performing arts lessons to children aged 3 to 19 of local and wider communities. They offer ballet, tap, solo singing lessons of vocal coaching, group singing and vocal coaching, performing arts sessions, audition preparation, hip-hop, street dance, commercial dance. Now, if, you, if you go there on Saturday, it's absolutely buzzing with young people coming from all sorts of places to do. They, they've got a performance on the weekends in Neath um, of I. Okay? Can you go to the next one, please? Now, they come, our current production of Army. Now, this is actually a little film here, but I don't think it's no, going to play. No. It's going to play. So, um, this is, <coughs> if, you show, if you see the news, it's all full of kids just having a really good time. Okay, so next one, please. Now it's run by, I don't know if Chloe is out there somewhere. I don't know whether you can, is, is she able to be put on? I'd like you to then. Um, <coughs> no, I shouldn't. No, perhaps she's not. Anyway, anyway don't, don't. Um, Chloe and Elise Anders got a funny. Qualified teachers with professional performing arts training from accredited theatre training schools in London. They're both fluent Welsh speakers. Their experience will allow us to design a theatre, cinema space, multifunction spaces for hire for a variety of local groups. 
Once the project is completed, they'll be able to expand to offer a range of services for the community, Welsh lessons, support sessions, mother and baby sessions, and will aid in creating an annual events calendar for the community. Anton Hitchcliff is a vocal coach, music teacher, dance teacher. He also has over 10 years experience in mediation and funding support. With his creative skills and connections, the annual events calendar will be diverse in line with community needs, and there will also be much needed support for funding applications. Kenny Montiero, hip hop and commercial teacher, can offer African dance and fitness sessions given the right facilities, fluent in Portuguese, French, Italian and Creole. Sean Alliscott, the school safeguarding officer, she works with vulnerable children and adults and is a great asset to our team. She has the ability to offer hands-on support in our daily running of events and the centre. Next, please. Thank you, talent. Thank yeah, plenty of talent. You I'm already... This facility and offer our, our, our kids. citizens yeah. of all ages yeah. activities. Yeah. As a team, we're very proud to be diverse and celebrate our uniqueness and differences. We have members of the LGBTQ group, our company directors, a woman launched and run by two sisters, our commercial teacher is Black African. We are Welsh speakers, we have people from a variety of cultures and social backgrounds, including people who have additional learning needs. We have the support from Kate from Pennacum and Wind Farm, the business team in the Total Council and the Arts Council funding for Wales. Our carnival theme this year is Encanto to celebrate our multicultural pupils. Next, please. Right. <coughs> we currently rent the town hall on a weekly basis for performing art sessions, roughly £60 a day. Ballet, tap, hip hop, and commercial only offered in Resolve due to lack of facilities and storage issues. Annual music is held in Leith. The musical is held in Leith due to lack of facilities locally. £3,500 paid in Neath for theatre hire. The annual Christmas concert in Kinney Town Hall is restricted due to space and the stage, the backstage, being unusable. With the use of an art centre, we could put on a minimum of three shows a year ourselves and bring in external companies and productions to perform and offer workshops to the community, <coughs> increasing footfall for other businesses and putting Kinney on the map. Next. We offer full support to the creation of an art centre in the community. We recognise the potential of the building I feel it would be a great place to install a theatre and rehearsal meeting that space that the whole community could benefit from. We are happy to offer our expertise, skills and experience in planning, funding, developing and running the arts centre. So we're not just reliant on heritage funding, we've got access to all this other funding too. The Welsh Government has said that Participation of the arts throughout deprived areas in Wales is a priority. They say that just because you live where you do, you should have access to everything that gives people joy and health and mental health and all those other things. And certainly during the last two years when our children have suffered terribly, and as ex-teachers, we can only imagine what it must be like. And we think that Clinny definitely could benefit from this. And in fact, with their youth and their energy and their expertise, we hope that we can actually leave them to drive the project forward, to apply for the funding alongside us. So not only do we have access to, you know, the, the, the heritage funding and, and, um, and the other things out there, but we've got all of this money too. Now, that should reassure Anybody who thinks that the town is going to be pouring money into this, that is not the case. Okay? It's not the case. And I know people who say, oh, we've got the town hall where we can do all this. You know, we've all been to the town hall. You can't do this. If we um, follow the, the, the vision for Britannia, we will have smaller rooms. We'll have smaller practice rooms. We will have a bigger room. To come back to set up a venue so we could run the historical society from the, the village, from the Welfare Hall in Congraff, because there's no one in the village to hold it. So really, it's, it's, a, it's not true to say that it can do, it, it doesn't need both these venues. And I'll tell you something, if there was anything that Brenda and I could do to increase the funding for the town hall, I'll tell you now, we'd be in on it straight on, because we're not, we are doers. Both of us, we're doers. We don't just sit about and wait for somebody else to do it. 
we get on with it. And because we've got friends of Town Hall, we've got friends of the family, we're friends of Park, we should be friends of Glimmy. Yeah. To drive him forward, to yeah. drive Glimmy forward. When, you know, I, I lived in this village nearly 70 years. And my family I, I go back generations. And I'm proud to be from Glimmy. But at, at the moment, Glimmy, it frustrates me because we, we're a bit like a desert. There's nothing happening of any consequence to put Glimmy on the village. You know, I've given 40 years to education. I know what children need. And we need these spaces to the children. When I was teaching not so far away, the children of the village didn't go out of the village all weekend. They didn't go far to sleep. You know, we probably took our children to leave to do all these activities. Why should we? We got a facility in the village. You know, and I, I hope, and I have written this to finish, you know, I've given 40 years to education in, in this locality, and I hope that people know me and my principles well enough to know and to realise that I'd never give my heartfelt backing. As I have to this project, it's been on our agenda for the last five years. I never give my back into a project just because a member of my family tells me to. Now, Ben Morgan may be my brother in law, but I am certainly no yes person. And I resent that the cyber snipers in the village, and there are many, and it really hurts me to post rubbish about me taking this project on because Ben is my brother in law. That is a load of rubbish. It'd be far better if they came from behind the closed doors and helped to make Glimmy the thriving, friendly, caring community it used to be. You know, if, if people want to snipe and then they're not willing to help, well, be frank. Yeah, be quiet. Okay? Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we've, got, we've got what we think of this project. It's not going to drain money out of the council business. But the money is there. It's our money. And it's scary. It's scary. You know, at all. You think of all these millions of pounds that could be coming to clean it. It's scary. Who's going to manage it? Will it, will it be managers? Trust. Care. Yeah, I'll think ahead and then I'll think ahead. Have yeah. a vision for Clinique because at the moment Clinique has got close eyes. Yeah, we just, I, I think that's pretty much sums up because we don't want to say Sorry. As you can see, we do get a lot of questions. Thank you very much. Do you welcome our. Um, that, that was a substantive presentation, and uh, we appreciate the work that's gone into it. Um, I'll just see if there are any um, final brief questions from members. I'm, I'm afraid I'm not seeing hands from, oh, from I'd here. Like to, I'd like to ask a question. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Kerry, can you, can you call them for me? Because I can't, I can't see uh, everyone here. Uh, I'm Stephen after Julia. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Councillor. Uh, okay, Julian Bullman first, please. Uh, I like the idea of going for the, the heritage funding, but there are different funds within the lottery community as well to go and investigate. Um, and we mentioned the art councils and so forth, but the, the funding can be is the is the, the guys to go to to find out what grants are available. Including things like the disability fund, which is uh, which is done through the Welsh government offices themselves, is something we've accessed before in different uh, in, in projects myself. So I'm not sure why we should just limit ourselves to oh, one. No, the no we, we go for anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we go you know, for if, you, if you want, if you want some guidance, just let me know, and I'll point yeah. you the rest of some funding partners. Okay. Thanks very much, uh, Julian. Uh, comes to Stephen Evans next. Steve. You know, just a couple of questions in relation to the points you, you read, and I've read it in the past. You, you, you sort of said that parking is not an issue in Glenith. It is an issue in Glenith. And uh, can you tell me where you see that the parking is going to improve? Bearing in mind there is only one space down where the old swimming bars used to be. If you drive around Glenith after six o'clock down the side streets, you see there is no parking in any of the side streets at all. And if you drive down Glenith in the middle of the day, you'll see uh, how the parking goes on in the high street and how the place is on chock-a-block. So access and parking 
is an issue. It's always going to be an issue. The second one is, you made a point that the, uh, the town hall is not fit for purpose. Can you tell me what evidence you base that on, please? Um, uh, let me finish. Let me finish. I let you finish. So let me finish, please. Yeah, sorry. And the, and, the, and the third point is this. You talk, uh, you contradict yourself in saying that the uh, Bethania could be an art centre with a theatre and then you go on to say there will be side rooms for people to do other activities. Have you? How much space is there in Bethania? If you're going to put a theatre in there, then you've talked in the past about there being a museum in there, and you've talked about other things in there. Where is this all going? Well, if I can just, um, if I can just um, say one thing, um, the Bethania Arts Centre is going to be used for the Bethania's. And the, the nearest one to go and see is in somewhere in Merthyr. And um, what they've done is they've put a second floor in underneath the gallery. And so that they've got a, um, a sort of performance area upstairs where they've got a purpose-built lift that takes people up there. And then downstairs they've got an open area where um, between the pillars and the walls on the other side they've created rooms where... There are soundproof rooms, there are rehearsal rooms, and then the middle space is empty, which can be uh, then used for either performance or for yoga or for, uh, for anything else. Now, we're not saying that all the things that we said might be a possibility that can happen in the valley. When we put out the survey, we said, what would you like to see in there? And we gave a list of sort of preferences. I mean, it's just like saying, when we did... You did the park survey, didn't you? Now, when you did the park survey, you asked everybody, did you want a nature area? Did you want a, a, a sort of, um, you know, an area for sport? Did you want an area for, uh, for, for, for boats? And, what, you know, you had loads of different tick boxes, didn't you? Now, not all those things can happen down the park. You know, you, you're not going to have a nature reserve down there with, you know, with, with cricket and tennis and, and, and rugby pitches. You're not physically going to be able to pick to put all those things what we're saying is choose what you want yeah. choose what you want i do i fully understand about the issues with the parking i think that's going to be um you know an issue that even now when people go to the town hall to concerts and things they are past parking past my house yeah. i think whenever you <coughs> to do that 
But obviously, since then, we've had, um, we did go for example, we went for a grant to refurbish the kitchen when it was told that it didn't. And we, we put one in, we, I think it was for about £7,000, it was a really good kitchen. Um, to Penicamoid. Penicamoid got back to us after a consideration and said because the council owned it and the support was not likely to be forthcoming, they didn't give it to us. Did you not ask the council for the, the level of support required at that stage? We, uh, we, yes, we asked the uh, we asked the um, the buildings, the whatever the buildings, the buildings committee. Yes, we ran. I'm not aware of the buildings committee, but the, I, right. I, nothing, yeah, nothing came through me. Uh, but I'm just saying we did put it in okay. we said this is what we want to do, this okay. is what we're going to go for, and they said no. Okay, and it was only a fault, but yeah. I'm not aware of that. that and bearing in mind we have been through a pandemic, and bearing in mind where the council were going with this building, you know, we felt really that... Um, when you said that you were going to say it. <laughs> we felt we were tied up a little bit. Well, that was only in March 2021, don't forget, that the resolution was passed. Yeah. Well, what can we do when we said that you're going to put it on the market? Yeah. Well, between 2019 and 2021, I'd be, I'd be looking for more grants and more confidence in providing oh, us to come back. Simon, we were... Obviously, I know, as I said, I, I, I'm not going to live with you. we tried. Okay. Now, hang on, just before you go on now. When you decided that this... I, I, I didn't particularly want to go on this or backbiting thing, but before, when you first took over, we said... You, you first of all said that the... That the um, the community centre was overused, that there were builders using it, that they could get afford to pay for their own breakfast. Why should they be coming for sponsored subsidised breakfast? So then that all got run down. And then the next thing, there's not hardly anybody using the community centre. So then we decided, right, okay, then we will have, can we have, can we go to the co-op for a banner to promote the fact that the community centre is open? No. You said no. We said, could we go for a grant to refurbish the railings? Could we paint the railings? Could we paint the front so that at least you won't deteriorate in anymore. Yeah. The council said no. Can you give me an idea that's where that was said no? Well, they were in the minutes. Yeah, they were in the minutes. I genuinely don't believe that to be true. I know that there was a banner. Right, well... Yeah, with respect, I know that there was a banner at the front advertising the town. We asked... There, there was a banner at the front promoting the garden. The, the, no? no? I, I got a photograph of it, so I'll show you. Simon, I, I, can I move you on to the, if yeah. you got any more points, because I, I, I'm, cer I'm certainly aware of, of um, a, a request for a banner that, uh, that wasn't permitted, but uh, then I, I don't know how long ago that was. If we can just go to stick to the next point, because we need to come to the end of this item soon. Well, I've got some impression, just in terms of the kitchen, I went down to all and obtained two kitchen boots. Yeah. Um, when, when, when I wasn't the chair, actually, of the council. Um, one of them was 28,883, and it was 37,633, of which I presented to the council and asked them to take forward. And because of the magnitude of the cost, it wasn't a couple of thousand pounds, it was, it, was it was a high cost. And I could provide those two as well. Well, we were the that before that time. I don't know. We, we, put, I think it was in the time. we put in. We put in. We were hoping. You know, but we were hoping this evening would be a moving on section. Okay. Well, I'm going to get you to ask questions about what your presentation was. Um, I agree with Stephen about the parking. Need that there, but the larger towns better infrastructure more than what we've done. Um, but is that a reason for us not to have this uh, facility? No. Good. Good. Not at all. It's just a position. Yeah, there's no parking space there. No. I think it's I think it's the, the direct impact out front is where people associate the park in issue. Right? So there's car parks and something like that. Yeah, actually there's loads of sites. Yeah, it's that's how we've been managed. Yeah. It was a so it was built car parks, not that yeah. way better than that. In, in terms of what else you said, you went you went on to say about there not being any help in the town. Now I can't strongly enough disagree with that. We've got the training centre. Which Dad, you're aware, does an awful lot of this community. We've got the rugby club, which I'm directly involved with, and we've got the welfare park. I, I see those as community hubs in different guises, but a community hub nonetheless. But I don't think you can call the rugby club a community hub because I, for one, wouldn't go to the rugby club. I know, but you're not all of the community. No, no, exactly. Yeah. And um, those are the people. 
love someone else. Yeah, I'm, I agree with you. I'm not, I'm not sorry, you have to provide others. Exactly. I, I don't and we have never ever said we want Britannia at all costs. We want the time to train. We want the park to train. We want the, everything else in the village to thrive. I, I, I agree with you, but I'm just making the fact there that I, I would pick those other places. Yes, it's fine. Yeah, I think, mean, you know, we're just picking. Just in terms of the Arts Academy, great, I'm fully supportive of the Arts Academy. I speak with Chloe and Elise and their man, and their man um, quite regularly, especially when I have to open the town hall uh, and we go from there. Um, is it partners you are or, or the Friends of Academy, Friends of Badania join the Arts Academy board? And well, what is the relationship? Yeah, with at the moment, it's, it's, it is infancy. Yeah. At the moment, it's just that we're talking to each other. Brilliant. Okay. Sure, that's, but, but there is a possibility that. We will become what we were rather hoping for is it would be that we would possibly put together a separate group where it was right. made up of all different sort of agencies and, and so there would be representatives from the council and from us and from and uh, and and the local country. community so yeah. that they would run. So you're not directly involved with that at the moment? Not officially, okay. we really don't share the bank account with us. Fine, okay. Um, you mentioned about the um, arts sector. Mm -hmm. um, the training centre, go back to that. Isn't there an arts facility I call the Fayton Arts? Oh, um, Simon. Is, is there a facility there called the Fayton Arts? There is a facility there called the Fayton Arts, and it doesn't have a window. So I'm sorry that I know the arts group that was there, the arts group that was there, has folded. Okay, I, mean, I, I wasn't aware of that. The arts facilities okay. are not um, okay. fit for business. And my last point. Um, you, you quite strongly suggested um, nothing is happening in Glynneath. I, I personally take average to that. I mean, personally, um, again, the rugby club, we've brought in £400,000 of the grants in the last seven years for various things, which makes that a community transformation and that comes community hub. Okay? We've also got the potential £750,000 bid ongoing for the welfare park. Yes. Uh, and that's something a little bit unique and different. We've secured and are in the process of erecting and installing the, the, the statue of Max Boyce, which is something a bit different. So I would disagree that nothing's happening here. All right. Well, that's that's right. My choice of words was wrong. Yeah. But as I said, all, not everybody goes to every facility, no. so let's provide something else for the people who come to. Because not everybody wants to kick a ball. I know that might come and say yes, you. No, we, we, we've discussed that before, Janet, and I agree with you. There needs to be certain things for certain people, yeah. different things for different people. Yeah, and, and when you yeah. say about the arts department, arts thing, you're just talking about somebody sitting down doing some painting and drawing. I'm not, you're talking about the arts. No, no, you're talking about the arts, you're talking about the main arts centre, that's just for painting and right. drawing and things. Okay. This is arts in the, uh, in the yeah. true yeah. sense of the word, where there's, you know, Uh, for the moment now, so uh, I'm going to uh, sort of wrap this item up. Um, now, listen, we've had uh, a good session for um, quite a while, uh, listening to a lot of interesting, uh, fascinating facts and, and the research work undertaken by the Friends of Athania. Um, some fair points asked by members and, and some answers given. So, uh, I, I want members, I want you to reflect on the facts that we've, from last meeting, we've passed a resolution to investigate the way in which we can go forward. If the circumstances are, are permitting us to move forward. Uh, I think we've heard a presentation tonight that suggests certainly a, a whole range of ways that we might look at moving forward. Uh, it's early days, but, but I'm quite pleased with what, what I've heard from the Friends of Bethania. Um, they've, they've undertaken a tremendous amount of work and research. Um, believe it or not, none of which has come as any suggestion from me, uh, but that, that's really where I am now is to say uh, I'm very appreciative of the presentation we just had. I hope members feel the same way and I hope now that members will take on board some of the ideas that have been put forward and incorporate those in, in the investigations that we need to undertake when we move forward on the basis of what we passed last month. So can I thank the Friends of Daniel once again for the presentation, for their time, for their efforts and please keep doing what, what you do. I, I think Can I the, make the, uh, the comment here to we have 98 members um, of the Friends of the Pania 
happy and not just a handful of residents of the village. Thank you very much, Dr. Mark. Um, okay, uh, clerks, I don't know if it's going to take any um, any engineering to, to decouple the slides from from the computer, but if um, we just pause for a few moments. Right, okay. Um, thank you. I, I'll now move on then to item, well, I'll call it item 6B, which is to uh, receive the statement from Geraint Thomas. Geraint, yeah. right, sir. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, I, I would say at the outset that I, never, I haven't spoken to the Chairman either on this, this particular item. Uh, it's a, a view expressed for myself as acting as a, an aid memoir or a consultant with the clerk and in, in moving things forward. Um, please just bear with me as I, as, I, as I go through my presentation. Obviously, the issue of the fact that it is very positive as far as I can uh, since that meeting the clerk and myself have been subjected to some concerns as to why the um, motion was allowed to take place. That is now academic as it was already agreed. Moving forward, as far as I am concerned and the clerk, that's all that's been agreed as far as we are concerned is an agreement in principle to look at aspects associated with the Sandia in making it available for use in the community. For varying uh, functions, there is a lot of state group that needs to be undertaken before that materializes, not least the question of legal interpretations, uh, the, the current situation of the premises, the costs, etc., etc., the effects on the budget. And I would stress there's no budget available at the moment in the current budget for any remedial work, except what the presentation said is the, the emphasis is on no cost to the council, but there will be costs associated when, 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 it, when, it, when, it, when it, it, it gets in materialises. Um, obviously, we, we know there's plenty of grants out there, uh, but again, that's down to bureaucracy. There's a lot of bureaucracy involved in, in grant applications, and that doesn't happen. Those don't happen overnight, albeit they may get a... Thank you. 
created a chair to make decisions on its behalf and doesn't listen to and communicate with its community, other community councils, county and, and, and country. So this this document is, is not the Bible, but if, if people take on board what is put in this, I'm sure uh, they will understand more fully the situations that we face. As I said earlier, it's, I'm pinpointing this at the councillors who have to make the, the, the ultimate decision. And I would stress it's a corporate decision. Right? It, it's a democratic, uh, uh, democratic uh, council. The decisions are made corporately. If the individuals don't like the decisions of the council, they still have to abide by the rules because of the democracy situation associated. Coming back to Bethania, I, I, I do believe that Kerry and myself will do our utmost to investigate fully the pros and cons of uh, the situation in Bethania, and we will prepare a report in the short, short in the long run, depending on the Kerry's workload, which is obviously quite uh, significant, and Kerry Ann was with us tonight, it's quite significant at the moment because we haven't had a, a clerk per se for a number of months and there's a lot of inherent issues that have to be dealt with, not least sorting out the accounts for the last financial year. So certain things take priority over others. doesn't mean to say that we won't be looking at it, uh, but we will. Uh, take on board everybody's concerns right? uh, before um, we, 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 we go any further with regard to that. I just want to make those points because it is, it, it, the, the public have a role to play, don't get me wrong in all this, but at the end of the day I want to make clear to the councillors who are making a decision, you've put them in place, right? so you have to uh, Go, get, go with what, what the council says, you know. So that that's where I'm coming from. It's it's firm advice, and I'm, I'm not. Um, I don't intend in uh, in uh, uh, the event the wheel, but the wheel has already been done with the Welsh government, and this is the most up to date and it's the most readable document from my perspective that the government, the Welsh government, has has, has produced to them. So I leave it at that. Uh, thank you for your time. But I mean, it, it had to be said as far as I'm concerned, as the consult, uh, as a consultant, to assist you in bringing GTC up to a standard that the public want. Not only uh, I would expect from the councillors, but the public, and that is important. We are here to serve the public. You may not agree with some of the decisions that we have to make. But as long as they're made in the context of the, the, the outlays within this document, and, and we have a, a, an audit trail of how we reach the, 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 the decisions, financial, legal, uh, community engagement, etc., that's that's the way forward. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm sure our colleagues will take on board all those uh, wise points. I can ask you probably a version of the Council of Governors. Yes, if you know the text, I can't tell you what's it. Yeah, I'm sure all the councillors will have a copy. Um, yeah, they could do yeah. uh, Because the previous version was, um, you know, was a good one, but this is now up to date. Thank you, Chair. I, I'd like to um, echo what Gary just said, uh, and obviously endorse what he has said in terms of the good councillors and what we should be doing. I firmly believe openness and transparency in, in, is, is paramount in everything that we do. Um, but I feel at this point, uh, Gary mentioned in his statement where he said that he believed the motion from last month is now academic. I'd like to express my concerns that the motions were not carried out in line with our standing orders last month. And also, let's just say that I have received two emails um, relating to two members' involvement in, in the Friends of Bethania, which I think members should be aware of. The first one uh, is in, from Councillor Carolyn Edwards in 2019, um, where I'll read it out. Hi, X. Put the talk chat on Friday. I've been speaking with our clerk, who is very keen to save and develop the chapel. We, we need to set up friends of ASAP, and I know we were very busy, 
But if you want something done, ask a busy person. They hope you don't mind, but I've copied X in, as he would like to speak to you for your previous knowledge and involvement in the chapel. Lots of us willing to do stuff, but they feel better if we were more behind the scene. I'm sure we can get a lot of people on board with this. That's one. The other is, is from Councillor Dan Morgan in reply to him from the clerk at that point, where he says, great, well done. I suppose I'd better concentrate somewhat on the open, uh, inverted commas, uh, battle for Bethania. In the meantime, there are quite a few negatives coming from five or six councils where others seem to be more supportive, at least supportive or continuing to try our best with what we've currently got. Fingers crossed we're getting a good response from the conditional survey, uh, both from the point of view of safety and from the vibrancy of maintaining development in the future. I, I, I sought legal advice and I believe those to be premeditated um, decisions that were uh, documented and um, any involved um, interest has not been declared by those members. You may. So, would you be happy to send that advice over? Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The reason is that I, I think last month's meeting and all happened wasn't, wasn't in the spirit of what we just said we needed to be doing. Uh, and as simple as that. Uh, I, uh, I'll move on to the next stage because I don't want to, to, to concentrate just on that. I have no problem with this place. I just think that it needs to be outside of the control of the council. And, and if the Friends of the Family and the Arts Academy get together, as I understand they already have, in fact, the Arts Academy lady who has told me she's already saved more than £20,000 of her own money in order to look to purchase this building and wants to purchase this building and doesn't want to lease it from the council. She wants to purchase this building alongside the Friends of the Family and do what they want to do to it. And I'm firmly before that. I can, favour of that. I think that, that, that goes with all of my principles of what I've said over the last couple of years. It takes the cost, the utilities, the rent, rent the lease, you know, all those kinds of things that the council will be born with. Together with, together with don't forget, um, uh, the, the, the costs that I shared this together, I don't know if you shared it with us yet, you know, we've got some urgent uh, repairs repaired to this building. We've got recommended in the two years, recommended five years, recommended we as a council can't afford to do all of those. There's, there's over 200,000 pounds worth of repairs and maintenance there, which we simply don't have, and we simply can't find the grants for. Right. I mean, the sorry, last, last to finish, the Friends of the Vanier and Arts Academy can find grants that can do all of those things. Uh, please show me, and I'll help you. Right, then. And please hear you say those good things about the, uh, the support of moving forward in the right way. I have to say, in terms of your uh, you know, your allegations of not doing things properly, I, I refute those. I, I've never been personally a f member of the Friends of Bethania. That doesn't mean to say that I don't support their, their, their objectives. Um, I've never been a member of the Penny Football Club, but, but I would support them to the village if they wanted to, to develop something. It, it, this is the town council. This is our asset at the moment. Uh, all I'm doing is trying to try my damnedest to, to, to make sure that we keep it here for the public of Penny. Whether it's transfer to somebody else to do it for us or with us. It, that is one of the options that's included in our, in our motion in May. Right? But I don't think, I don't really think we should go into detail about individuals and, and sums of money because we're in an open session. And I think that's that's a matter for another day. Right? But, so, okay, so anyway, we, we dealt with uh, the point from Gary Thomas and we thank you for that. And we look forward to receiving that new version of the uh, Council's guidance as soon as we can. Chair, Chair, can yeah. I come in, please? Yeah, yes. Uh, personally, I, I would, as you just said, refute any predetermination here. Uh, I've never hidden my support for Bethania, having been involved in it for quite some time. Um, I have never been a member of the Friends of, and I'd like to to know exactly where Councillor Noel has had a copy of my private emails. Because that that would have been a private email. Okay. So where did you have that from, Simon? Well, you know, come, come on, predetermine. You don't predetermine anything, do you? No. Yeah, we we'll, we we'll look into, into that afterwards. Um, yes, please. A, please. a valid point. If, if people are going to quote things from other members, you know, it needs to be done properly and carefully. And I would have. Or perhaps a, a, a brief discussion before. Anyway, we, we move on from that. Right, 
6, 7 is my